Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record a sales receipt in QuickBooks Online. To do this, I just start with the plus new button in the upper left hand corner. This is basically where I go for everything because it's my I want to do something button. If I want to do something, I can probably do it from here. Under the header for customers, I'm going to come down to sales receipt. I'm going to select my customer for my sales receipt. Um, let's pick Lenny. My sales receipt date will make it today, so 4-4-23. I'm going to indicate any tags. If I wanted, I could add shipping information as well as more shipping information. I can add any tags that I want to use to track. I can indicate the payment method, the reference number. I must choose a deposit to. Your deposit to list won't be as long as this and you sure as the won't, world won't have delete and delete me and demos created for stuff. You'll likely have a checking account, maybe a second checking account, and then you'll have a payments to deposit or for you, it might say undeposited funds. I'm gonna select payments to deposit for this. On the right hand side, you might have an editable sales receipt number. You may or may not have location. I have location turned on because I'm showing people how to do stuff. Over here to the right is location of sale. Location of the sale is important if you charge sales tax. This is where QuickBooks knows to go to identify what is the sales tax rate for your sale. Down below, you can identify a service date. So we'll say that the service took place yesterday and I'm invoicing it today. Let's say the service is consulting. To the right of that, I can add a description. If I had a default description set up, it would show. If I had a default, I can still edit it. Let's say we were consulting on the best types of cheese for a cheeseburger and I wanted that to be on the receipt. The answer is any kind of cheese is the best kind of cheese. Uh, let's say that consulting service is $99. Over to the right, we can indicate taxable or non-taxable. So I have one hour or one service, $99 each for a total of $99. Does it apply for sales tax or does sales tax apply to it? Yes or no? I'm gonna say sales tax does apply. For anybody watching this in Washington, no, sales tax wouldn't apply. I just want to demo something. And then over to the right is class. If you're using class tracking, I'm going to scoot down. A sales tax rate is based on location. So it calculates that for me. It's based on this location right here. So if I change the location, it will change my sales tax rate. If I have shipping, my total, my amount received, my balance due. My sales receipts are records that I create when somebody pays for the goods or services at the time. So I'm not asking them to pay later. I'm recording they paid now. This is a receipt that I can provide to them or just have for myself. I'm going to go ahead and select save and close. Let's talk just for a minute about what happened. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab my sales receipt. So I go to the magnifying glass, go to my sales receipt. I know you're not going to love the debits and credits, but I'm going to show you anyhow. I'm going to go to more. I'm going to go to transaction journal. This is what I have. Um, $109 went into the account called payments to deposit. For you, it might say payments to deposit. It might say undeposited funds. It might say checking. It might say PayPal. Basically, where did it go? Like, where did the money you collected go? Then let's talk about the things that you have. You have services. So in my chart of accounts, services is an income account. So I said, increase my income by $99. And then I have these two different tax agencies. Let me just see if I can click on this little line and make it easier to read. It's funny that there's two because really they have the same name. The way that it works in Washington, as well as many other locations, you have a rate for the state and then you have a county or a city rate. So that's why it's broken apart. So the QuickBooks can keep track of that somewhere else. So what QuickBooks is doing is it's saying, increase my bank account or my temporary holding account, increase my income, 
and increase my sales tax payable or my sales tax liability. When you look at the profit and loss, you'll only see the $99 in income. You're not going to see the full 109 because you didn't earn the full 109. If you're not sure what this payments to deposit is, I'll just show you. This should look kind of familiar to most of you. If you go to plus new in the upper left hand corner of your screen, on the right hand side under bank deposit, when you select bank deposit, this is your payments to deposit. So here's my, my Lenny deposit. It's $109. If you're not sure about undeposited funds, I've got videos and blogs on it. I'm happy to explain it to you. If you get super stuck, if any of this feels overwhelming or too big or you're uncertain, don't hesitate to book a call with me. Let me run through it with you. You can share screen. I can share screen. Whatever questions you have, I'd love to try to answer them. If my team or I can do anything for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much.